Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be doing a full review of the Premium Pack Yak 38, a rank 6, currently 9.3 PR strike fighter with VTOL capabilities in the Russian Air Tech tree. I'll be going over everything that you need to know about the Yak 38, including its key stats, how it plays, its strengths and weaknesses, and that'll give you a final rating of the vehicle based on several key points just before I give you my final recommendation on if I think that this vehicle is worth purchasing or not. I'll try to pack in as much info as possible into a quick of a video as possible so let's get into it so to start i'll place the stats here on the left side of the screen important stats to know are its rate of climb turn time and br additionally it can carry up to two r60 missiles two 23 millimeter external gun pods and for other ordnance kh23m atgms s5kp rockets s8m rockets and s24b rockets along with bombs ranging in weight between 100 kilograms and 500 kilograms each it is available in a pack that currently cost $60 USD and comes with 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium time. Now for how it plays. Quite simply, this is like a lesser version of a Harrier. It fills largely the same roles in that the Yak-38 can perform anti-air and anti-ground duties fairly well. The difference is that the Yak-38 minus its R-60 missiles is really just a generally lesser plane in terms of acceleration, agility, overall ordnance, and cannons. The Yak makes up for it though with its lower BR. In fact, the Yak-38 is the lowest BR are playing to be able to carry the amazing R-60 missiles in game and by quite a wide margin. Even though it can only carry two of these missiles, it will often lead to two kills if you can at least fire them before you die. Now I say this because while the Yak-38 has amazing missiles and amazing acceleration, especially for a subsonic plane, in fact actually its acceleration beats many supersonic planes, it's quite a bit of a barge and really doesn't have countermeasures making you an easy kill for faster planes or even just simply more agile planes especially if they have good missiles. Though, of course, cannons and machine guns can destroy this plane just as well. Simply put, the Yak-38 has awful agility, especially at speed. In some ways, the Yak-38, at least against air targets, is almost like a glass cannon. You have amazingly superior missiles at 9.3 BR, but your plane has no way of defending itself. Basically, you just need to try to stay high and out of sight in order to survive, locking onto enemy targets from over 2 kilometers away. Finding targets might be a little bit difficult in this role, being that you have have no radar, but at least in air AB and RB, you can still track targets pretty much just by if your allies see them as well. That's pretty much what this plane can do. It can climb, dive, launch missiles, and run. Being in a down tier makes you especially potent as few planes can outrun or outmaneuver R60s below 9.3 BR, especially being that most of these planes do not have countermeasures, but unfortunately, it's pretty much take off, shoot missiles, land, take off, shoot missiles, land. It's just a cycle, and that's what you're going to get with the Yak-38 when it comes to Air RB. On the other hand, in a close air support role, the Yak-38 feels pretty much totally different, though still limited by the same issue that it has in Air RB, the fact that it cannot carry much ordnance on its short stubby wings. While it does not have a ballistics computer for its bombs, a trait of which will substantially limit your effectiveness if, of course, you decide to carry bombs, it does have one for rockets, which actually makes this plane incredibly effective with its rocket loadout versus ground targets. Additionally, as agility does not matter as much in a close air support role, at least at this BR, you can take as many wide turns as you want when circling back in on your enemies. Another benefit of this plane is being able to carry two R60s along with your anti-ground ordnance, which makes the Yak-38 an effective multi-role plane that can take care of close air support and air cover with a single loadout. Additionally, especially in a down tier, you are less likely to see enemy SAMs, which will make your lack of countermeasures less noticeable, meaning that the Yak-38 will be more likely to reach its target than even the much faster SU-7BMK, as even a single 0.3 or 0.4 BR increase at this level of play might make the difference between reaching your target and dying several miles out. Additionally, for both air and ground, it has an effective 23mm cannon that can dispatch both planes and unarmored or lightly armored ground targets with ease. Just make sure that you watch your ammo though, as it only has 160 rounds of ammunition in total. Otherwise, it's a fairly effective cannon for being a multi-role plane. And finally, something I did not mention earlier, the Yak-38 has access to two KH-24M ATGMs, which gives you the ability to target ground targets at a long range, so long as you are effective at the controls, which is something that I am just awful with. So I hope you accept this test flight footage as proof that the Yak-38 does indeed have the KH-24Ms, but again, I am awful with them. But with that embarrassing admission out of the way, let's get into the Yak-38's strengths and weaknesses. And first for its strengths, it has excellent acceleration 
acceleration at 9.3 BR. In fact, actually, I do not know if there is a single plane with better acceleration at this BR, whether it's supersonic or not. It also features two R60s, again, at 9.3 BR, which is, if I'm not mistaken, the lowest BR that you're going to get R60s at, which is a huge strength. Third, it has a strong 23 millimeter cannon, though of course it only carries 160 shells. Fourth, though it has a small payload, you can equip two 250 kilogram bombs along with a maximum of two R60 missiles and quickly hit the enemy base or ground targets for extra points in Air RB. For its fifth strength, it can carry a small but effective rocket and missile loadout, which allows the Yak-38 to excel in close air support. The KH-24M is extremely deadly, especially if you're good with the controls, which again, I am not. One thing to note is that Gaijin recently took away strike fighter air spawns for higher BR strike aircraft. If Gaijin ever brings that back, that will be a huge strength for the Yak-38, but as of right now, it is not a strength and just has to spawn with regular aircraft at the airfield. Beyond this, it also has a radar warning receiver, which although it does not have any countermeasures, the radar warning receiver will be sufficient to allow you to dodge at least a few missiles. For its seventh strength, the Yak-38 also features manually vectorable thrust, which makes landing easier for many people. It also makes maneuverability better at low speeds if used correctly and in fine adjustments. And I use low speeds and I'll get into that in just a moment. For its second to last weakness, the Yak-38 is fairly small, which makes it slightly more difficult to hit with cannons. And finally, of course, of course, the Yak-38 features premium RP and Silver Lion bonuses. Now for its weaknesses, and there are quite a few. It has no air brakes, it has no afterburners. It also has no countermeasures, as mentioned before. Now this is not expected at this BR, but still it makes it a tough thing to be without, especially being that you're not maneuverable and can be easily be up tiered. Now beyond this, again, I just mentioned it, mediocre maneuverability. It turns like a bus compared to MiGs and Harriers, especially at 4,000 plus meters and at high speeds. For its fifth weakness, the Yak-38 has no radar, but again, it does have the radar warning receiver which counts for something. Six, as no ballistics computer for bombs, though of course, again, it does have one for rockets. I don't know if I mentioned that in its strengths, but the ballistics computer for rockets should definitely be in the strengths. Seventh, while powerful, it has a very limited ordnance load, really only up to four slots can you have any degree of ordnance, and even still, it's fairly light, even in those four different slots. For its eighth weakness, as with most Russian planes, it has a ridiculously light minimum fuel load. It is 100% recommended to take at least 20 minutes of fuel with you in every flight. Beyond this, while it has good acceleration in an up tier, or with nearly all other strike aircraft, same as maybe the A-4 Skyhawk, you will rarely make it to an enemy base first. For its tenth weakness, Weakness, it can only use VTOL at low speeds. Unfortunately, it does not have the ability to vector thrust at high speeds, which does, of course, limit its VTOL effectiveness. And finally, currently, again, as mentioned before, it has no air spawn. So unless Gaijin reverses its decision on removing rank 6 and above strike fighters from benefiting from air spawns, this is a major weakness. And now it's that time of the video. Let's go over my final recommendation and ratings. And to be honest with you guys, before I even started using the Yak-38, I thought I would be highly disappointed. I own both AV-8 Harriers, currently in the American Air Tech Tree, as well as the GR-1. And I thought that the Yak-38 would be a terrible experience compared to those planes. And when I say I own both AV-8, I own the AV-8C and have test driven the AV-8A substantially in matches. Now, while the Yak-38 is not quite as good, at least in terms of overall experience, acceleration, VTOL capabilities, maneuverability, and arguably in terms of ground attack, or even anti-air capabilities, depending of course on the model of Harrier, I can say that at 9.3 BR and with the R60s, the premium pack Yak-38 can be incredibly dominant. Though it has only a limited capability to inflict damage upon enemy forces before being forced to land, it can more assuredly inflict that damage than nearly all other similar BR premiums, VTOL or otherwise, as the R60s are almost definite kills when you use them, as enemies in your BR bracket lack flares, are often subsonic, and are not always incredibly maneuverable. As such, the Yak-38 is one of the most capable anti-aircraft strike fighters at this BR, as all enemies are susceptible to its R-60 armament. Now to give you guys some ratings, I'll give the Yak-38 a 6 out of 10 for dogfighting. Better said, a 6 out of 10 in air RB, and even AB. If it was forced to traditionally dogfight with cannons and agility, the Yak-38 would be a 2 out of 10. The thing that makes this plane work in air RB, at 
all are its two R60 missiles. Without those, you're pretty much useless. It becomes where you just kind of take off firing missiles, hope you don't die, land, and repeat. That's pretty much how the AK-38 is in Air RB and, to a lesser extent, Air AB, if that's what you prefer to play. It's not bad, it's just that the missiles make the plane in this instance. That's about it. The AK-38 has missiles that are normally reserved for 10.0 BR plus planes, and it's all the way down at 9.3 BR. That means that the AK-38 is probably closer to 8.7 as an aircraft if it did not have access to those R60s. For close air support, I give the AK-38 a solid 7.5 out of 10. Now, while it is extremely potent versus ground targets, the AK-38 has an extremely limited payload capacity, with mediocre bomb options forcing you to either use rockets or the KH-23M missiles. Thankfully, when using rockets, you have use of a ballistic computer with the KH-23Ms being guided, but you will still suffer from a lack of total payload capacity and in up tiers, a lack of countermeasures. Finally, for grinding, I give the Yak-38 a 6.5 out of 10, simply because it is good, though not amazing, and has premium RP and SL bonuses. Its powerful weaponry gives it a high floor for minimum RP and SL per match, but its lack of carrying capacity severely limits its RP and SL ceiling. Overall, I give it a 7 out of 10. Now, if you're looking for a pure grinder, the SU-7 BMK will probably be better. Heck, even the SU-22 M3 might be better as a grinder, as long as you put a talisman on it. The reason for this is simply because the Yak-38 has limited killing capability beyond firing its two R60s, and has awful survivability, with both of these traits being factors in the Yak-38's RP per match ceiling being fairly low, at least again in Air RB. It is important to note though that the Yak-38 still has a good RP floor, in that a properly locked R60 is basically a gimme kill, and even if you die, you'll still get a kill or two per match, whereas the SU-7 BMK or SU-22 M3 might not do as well, at least as long as air spawns are not possible for these planes. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that the Yak-38 is a tad bit safer to get RP and SL consistently, but if you're any good, you should be able to get much more RP and SL for the SU-7 BMK or SU-22 M3, as long, again, as the M3 has a talisman. That said, should you buy the Yak-38? Well, Yes, if you want something that's at 9.3 BR, can perform multi-role capabilities with some degree of competence, and specializes in close air support. Whereas the SU-7 BMK is better as a grinder in Air RB specifically, and the SU-22 M3 is a much higher BR and is not a premium, meaning that even if you do add a talisman to it, you will not get more SL from it, the Yak-38 fills a nice little role where it can perform decently in both air and ground battles, while it is a bit better, again, in the close air support role. In all if you're looking for just a Russian close air support plane at this BR, I think it works perfectly well. If you're comparing it to the Harrier GR1 or the AV-8A, I'd probably say that those are a little bit better, even considering they're higher BRs, but if nothing else, the Yak-38 is a great fit for your Russian ground lineup and will do decently in air battles too, at least insofar as you play to its strengths. That said, however, thank you all so much for watching. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe if you like my content. Let me know what you guys think of the Yak-38 in the comments below. Either way, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.